Hello everyone, welcome to Anime No Me, and thank you for joining us for another One Piece video. Ever since Kizaru and Ben Beckman crossed paths during the Battle of the Best in Marineford, there have been several questions that have arisen regarding these two characters. Both seem to have a pretty good knowledge of each other, which might mean that they have known each other for quite a long time, and there might even be some deeper relationship between these two characters. So in today's video, we're going to talk about the possibility that Ben and Kizaru have known each other during the past, not necessarily as enemies, but just as rivals or something quite similar and they may have even been friends. But before we dive into the video, if you're new to the channel or even if you've watched a bunch of our videos, we'd be absolutely honored if you'd leave us a like and even subscribe and maybe leave us a comment letting us know what you thought of the video. It really helps us out, especially with that YouTube algorithm, and it motivates us to make more content. And if you'd like to help out the channel in a bigger way, consider sharing this video or another one of your favorites with a friend. But without further ado, let's get into the video. So my friends, we know very little about Ben Beckman and Kizaru's past, although they do have great significance in the story of One Piece. We only know about some of the events in the past where they appeared and may have crossed paths. The earliest mention we know of Borsalino, also known as Admiral Kizaru, was when he was 26 years old, and together with Sakazuki, who was 23 years old at the time, they joined the Navy together. Now, although we don't know when Ben Beckman kind of came to be in the past, we do know that he was born in the North Blue, just like Luffy and Shanks. And because of his great fame, Shanks went after Ben to recruit him for his crew. After much insistence and maybe even pestering, Ben Beckman finally accepted Shanks' request, becoming the first mate of the red-haired pirates, being the right-hand man and second most powerful pirate of this Yonko's crew. Now, we don't know exactly when Ben Beckman and Kizaru may have met during the past, and the possibility that they're friends during the past might be quite low since in their first meeting, Beckman was already a pirate and Kizaru was a marine. But we feel it's important to note the fact that their encounter at Marineford wasn't the friendliest to look at. Ben Beckman wore a straight face as he pointed his gun at Kizaru's direction, while the Admiral wore his sarcastic face. So this means that during the past, they may have faced off against each other several times. Since Beckman belongs to a crew of very powerful and famous pirates worldwide, these clashes may have happened at a time before Shanks had become a Yonka. After all, there is a rule, or at least a guideline, that Marines and Cyphopole agents are not to attack a Yonka, unless they're absolutely forced to start a fight with him, or have received direct orders from their superiors. This means that after Shanks became a Yonka, Kazaro would have hardly dared to challenge Beckman, or any other member of Shanks' crew to a duel, because if that happened, it would have caused a major world conflict. Aside from the looks these two characters gave each other, we didn't get much other dialogue between these characters to know if they actually fought in the past. But if they did, it was likely to have been a really interesting and memorable fight. Both characters are quite powerful in their own rights, which could provide for a very balanced confrontation. We know that Beckman's main means of combat are through long-barreled rifles and other muskets, in addition to knowing how to use swords as well, although it's not been shown how skilled he is at using them. So Beckman's fighting style is quite similar to Yas as both used ranged weapons to pierce the body of their opponents by fusing their hockey into their projectiles, managing to nullify their opponent's logia intangibility and even the resistance that their opponent has from hockey or some of their devil fruit. As the first mate of a Yonko, it can be quite easily assumed that Beckman has very advanced combat skills and also has an extremely high level of hockey, just like his Captain Shanks. As we've seen in many of the other crews in the One Piece world, many of the first mates of pirate crews often use swords as their means of combat, but Beckman has been shown to use ranged weapons, although it has been said that Bent's once single-handedly defeated Higama's crew of mountain bandits using only a cigarette and his rifle as a weapon, and he only then used it as a club. This clearly demonstrates that he has enough physical strength to use swords, or even heavy, close-range tools. This allows Beckman to not only limit himself to long-range weaponry and attacks. During the Battle of Marineford, Ben Beckman's reputation seemed to precede him because it even left Admiral Kazaru distressed. Now, just before the red-haired pirates revealed that they had arrived in Marineford, Jinbei was on his way carrying an unconscious Luffy to Lost Submarine, trying to desperately make an escape. But because of everything that Luffy had just been doing on the battlefield, Kizaru, along with the rest of the Atoms, had recognized that Luffy would become a much greater danger in the future if he were able to escape. So Admiral Kizaru begins charging a light attack to hit Luffy and his allies who were helping. But while charging that very attack, Kizaru heard a very familiar voice that tells him not to do it. When he turned his head to the side, he recognized who that voice was. Kazaru realizes that Ben Beckman was standing right beside him, pointing a rifle right at his head. Kazaru, for the briefest of moments, looked scared, but then re-established his sarcastic expression because he didn't end up canceling the attack. And using a ray of light, he tried to hit Law's submarine. But before a battle between Beckman and Kazaru could take place, Shanks appears and tells everyone in the fight that the great battle was over. Shanks declared that if anyone still wanted to continue the battle, that he and the rest of his red-haired pirates would be the new enemy, which left everyone present scared 
and afraid to continue with any of the fighting that had been going on, because the combat that was taking place no longer had a purpose. Realizing this himself, Sengoku, who was the fleet admiral at the time, tells all the marines to retreat from the battlefield, allowing the pirates to retreat and preventing any more loss of life in the middle of the battle. So with no other option, Kazaru just accepted and followed the orders of his superior Sengoku, abandoning the confrontation against Beckman and making it impossible for us to see the potential of these two characters. Now even though Kazaru was shown to be distressed in front of Beckman, he's not a character that we could ever underestimate their power. Kazaru is extremely powerful physically as well as the power granted by his devil fruit. Just think back to what happened on Sabadi Archipelago. Kazaru's mere presence was enough to create a mass panic because once anyone learned that an admiral was on the island, the pirates who were there, including most of the supernovas in Worst Generation, began fleeing, demonstrating that Kazaru has a very big reputation around the world. While on the island, Kazaru was easily able to defeat four of the pirates known as supernovas or pirates of the Worst Generation, namely Basil Hawkins, Arouge, Xdrake, and Scratchman Apu. Kazaru took these four down individually in a very quick and almost effortless way, demonstrating that there was a giant gap in power between them, being practically untouchable during this event in the archipelago. So after defeating those four Worst Generation pirates, Kazaru then changed his focus to go after the Straw Hats and managed to defeat them easily, almost taking Zoro's life without the Straw Hats being able to do anything to stop him because of his Logia's intangibility. However, before Kazaru could finish doing the job and take Zoro's life, the former right-hand man of the former King of the Pirates appears in the battle to fight the Admiral. Silver's Rayleigh appeared and distracted Kazaru while the Straw Hats fled from the Mighty Admiral. Because of his more advanced age, Rayleigh just wasn't able to fight the Admiral for as long as he would have liked, demonstrating that he could tire out after a few minutes of battle, while Kazaru appeared calm with his smiling face as always. However, those few precious moments that Rayleigh bought the Straw Hat crew, Kuma was able to teleport the Straw Hats to all different locations, leaving Kazaru and Kuma and Sentamaru against Rayleigh. And it seems after this confrontation, not only was Kazaru able to capture Rayleigh, Rayleigh was only able to make a single cut on the Admiral's cheek, despite being incredibly powerful. And still, that wasn't all that Kazaru did on the archipelago. He still continued fighting the remaining pirates that were there, managing to capture a total of 500 considerably strong pirates. And still, he came out of all of that fighting intact, with just the single cut that Rayleigh made on him in proof that he didn't come out completely unscathed in the mission. To go a little bit further with Kazaru's prowess, during the Battle of the Marineford, he was able to take on many of the Whitebeard pirates, managing to defeat them without much difficulty. It was only Marco and Whitebeard that proved to be worthy opponents against the Admiral. But this may have only meant that Kazaru just had to try harder to take them on, especially Whitebeard, who presented himself as the greatest danger in that battle. And during the fight, Kazaru received an attack from Marco in his hybrid form that threw him to the ground, but even that wasn't able to hurt the Admiral. I mean, not even Whitebeard, who is considered the strongest man in the world, was able to harm Kazaru. Although he already was really heavily injured and was at quite a disadvantage fighting three Admirals who were constantly rotating and also because Whitebeard had been getting up there in age. Using just his foot, Kazaru was able to hold off Whitebeard's Basento, managing to land a laser light on the large Yonko. And even though Kazaru wasn't as powerful as it, he still managed to maintain control in the battle, managing to avoid being hit by the crushing blows that Whitebeard threw at him. In fact, Kazaru might have been one of the few Marines to get out of Marineford still intact, proving to be quite a difficult opponent to hit because only the fastest of enemies would ever be able to do anything against Kazaru. So as we can see, both Kazaru and Ben Beckman are quite powerful and challenging, being fast, strong, and skilled in their specific combat areas, which would bring a really balanced battle between the two of them if it were to ever arise in the future. Since we're after the time skip, it's really likely that Beckman and Kazaru's power has increased all the more, becoming even more feared and powerful characters than what they had in Marineford, being practically close, if not above, the level of a Yonko. So if these two had ever clashed in the past, it would really be nothing compared to the battle that they would be able to have in this final saga that we're leading into, where these two characters would be able to demonstrate who was the strongest between them and reveal to us the past that these two characters may have in common. But with all that said, we'd love to know what you think about it now. Do you think there might have been an old connection between Kazaru and Beckman? I mean, we don't exactly know where Kazaru comes from, so is it possible that they may have been born in the same country or at least come from the same area of the world? Also, do you think that the looks that they exchanged in Marineford was more of an acknowledgement and kind of a rivalry or just fear? Let us know what you think in the comments below. So as we wrap up our video for the day, we'd like to thank all of you so much for watching the video, especially those of you who've hung out with us here to the very end. Be sure you comment on any themes or ideas that you'd like to see in future videos. And also, since you made it this far, give us a like and hit that red subscribe button before you head out to take on the rest of your day. Hope to see you all in our next video.
let's keep sailing this giant sea together. Take care.